Sordia comes from a root word. And the root word of Sordia is Aswad. And the word Aswad in Arabia is black. So when you put the word Araba, it comes from to move, Araba. And they name cars Sayada from the word Araba. Araba means to move. Put it together, black people who are moving. Saudi Arabians. But then they take the whole context out of the word and give you what they call today Bedouins. Because they know you don't speak the language. So if you go back to the language, we say, wait a minute, he's talking about some black people that was moving. To where these cracker looking white boys come in, these pale looking Arabs. They invaded your land. Those are the Aryan Hindus. That's what Mike was talking about earlier. You had a defective gene from the Hindu, Hindu and then you had a defective gene from the Nuba. The Nuba gave birth to what you call a Caucasian, right? Cursed with the albinoism. Then you had what you call an Aryan Hindu who was cursed and had to move out. He couldn't stand over there, so he had to move out in certain areas. And he moved out and took what they call today Iran. He moved out in Turkey. He moved out in what is called today Kuwait. He, had, he went all around the area. And to show you how, how he's not too smart, he does this here. If you take a, if I take this as a compass, right? And I go north, south, and I'm going east, and I'm going west, right? By the time I get here, what am I, where, what is this called? Northeast. By the time I get here, what is this called? Southeast. How about if I come over here? Then I have to go what is west, northwest or southwest, right? Where the hell is the middle of the east? Where's the Middle East? You see the mentality you're dealing with? They're telling you this is the middle of the east. Then it wouldn't be the middle of the east. It's going to be southeast or northeast. But it ain't the middle. So we got to change all that. And in changing all this, you see it every day with the changes happening. Certain people are coming up and standing up. I was, I was, I was last week, I was laughing for joy when I seen the brother Ellison out of Minnesota. He was elected in the Congress. He a nation of Islam. I was doing like this. Yeah! <laughs> because you know why? Everybody else going to say, he a nation of Islam up in there. I can get up in there. That was a great day. That was a great day. Okay? I hope I helped you. <laughs> you got good. Yeah, um, I was talking to this other brother who was uh, in the Egyptology. He kind of referred back how you were saying uh, they, were, they were frightened when they saw the Elohim and he got into their blood and it kind of altered uh, their seed. Right. He was telling me that, uh, you know, if you save your, save your seed up, I guess, for a year, then you could have a, a genius child because he's like, in the what do you mean saving it for a year? Just don't do nothing I, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. When you build yourself up, right. that child that you would give birth to a con uh, conception, you have to be careful. Because what did he say? Well, he, he was just saying. No, no, listen to what he said. Build himself up. Right. You better build your wife up, too. Right. Okay. You can't build yourself up and then don't build up. That's what happened with Cain, I mean Ham and his wife. See, what happens is with that, remember, when you go back to the story of Cain and Abel, Cain slew Abel and he got kicked out of the garden and he read to reside in the land of Nod where all kinds of demons were. And I see a lot of Nod acts today. Anytime you get that hair cut and you shaving off both sides of your head and you got the little tomahawk and you color it, that is a trick, that is a trademark that is a sign, that is a symbol of the land of Nod. That's a symbol of a demon when you do that. That's why I'm so glad that Brother Chad Johnson cut his hair. I was like, boy, you don't know what you're doing. And now I see sisters, once again, that always pops up. Everybody getting this mohawk, making circle crops in their head. They, they, they just formulating out of them demons. And out of that, he married into that family line, along with, because see, Abel had a twin sister that Cain took. And what I mean by, in those days, when you gave birth, you gave birth to a twin. That's how Cain was able to have his wife. Because Cain had a twin sister and Abel had a twin sister. They don't write that in the Bible because you talk about a 6,000 year period and this happened 49,000 years ago. So they thrown off. They don't know nothing about this. So because man, woman had memory glands, that memory glands was not to suckle one child. That was suckle two child. They didn't have no infamil and soyalac back in them days. A lot of cows wasn't running around in the garden. Show me, they say you that all of the beasts was in the outer field. 
in the outer garden. It wasn't in the inner garden. It wasn't in the garden of Eden. It was outside of it. So the, the milk that was nourishing children were coming from the breast, memory garden. So when Cain went over and took another wife of them, them demons, right, Cain did something when he seen that there was another brother born in the line of Adam, and that was Seth. Seth was a replacement. But Seth's seed didn't come from Adam. Seth's seed came from the Elohim or Anunnaki, the angelic beings that we say. That's why I said God said, I'm replacing it. You know, he hit up here. So by the time that bloodline happened, every child that Seth named, Cain named the same child. So they hid in the fact that if you came up and you said, well, we're looking for the seed of Enoch. And they said, I, I'm a, I, I was born by way of Enoch. And that's how that negative gene got in the family of Noah. Once again, Noah was perfect in this generation with the kids he gave birth, but all them kids took wives, their wives wasn't perfect. And that's how Ham had that problem. That's why Cain was born. So the seed can be the seed if you don't take care of both of y'all. Both of y'all would have to go a year of purity. And then that child you give out won't be as pure as the child of the child if you keep that format up. By the time the fourth generation gets here, you got perfect kids from your lawn. That's how you do it. Because this one ain't going to, this one's going to have problems, because he was going to act like you a little bit, but his son is going to be pushing that, and then by the time this son is born, that's the perfection. So that's why they say the fourth generation, you cleanse yourself out. It won't happen to the first, but it's going to happen to the fourth. And, if, and the one that you give birth first, He's, he's going to have a certain mode of train of thought, but if you keep that, that way when you conceive, you make sure you take, he'll keep that. And cast it to him, and pass it to him, and pass it to him. And if she do the same thing with the daughter, and pass it to the daughter, and pass it to the daughter, because you cannot be pure yourself and marry some gender. You can't do that. See that? That happens a lot, but if you want that purity in your family, you got to be careful. You gotta have it on both sides. You can't go in your wife house one day and her brother eating with the fork in his ear like this at the table. You be like, who's that? That's my brother. I gotta build with you. You know I gotta go to the army. I won't see you in two, three years. <laughs> right? Because if now if that's her brother, in her genes is somebody that one day might be eating like this. You know he's supposed to eat like this with a brother. That nigga doing like this here. <laughs> no. You gotta be careful, okay? And that's what happened. So he was right in telling you to preserve yourself, but you gotta preserve you and her. You feel me? Always remember that. And that's a good quality to have set forth to have beautiful children. And don't think they all gonna listen to you. You're gonna have a couple of retarded ones. That, that's the balance, man. You're gonna have a good one, you gotta have a nut. But the nut will protect the good one. That's always the case. You see that? So don't, don't be walking around like when that child gets 15, you looking at you like, you know, some of them tired of these rules in the house. Because it does happen. It happened with all us sitting here, right? You get 16, 15, 16, you be like, damn, man, I want to holler that boo over there. Pop tells me I'd be here at 10 o'clock. I'd do something about this. I'm going to try to get my own spot. Right or wrong. That's how we, that, <laughs> and that, that's that you know, that's, that's how life is. Because when your kids get a certain chain, they leave it. Because that, you know why? Because that's what you did. <laughs> and that's how you grow. So you teach them with them qualities while you can. And, you get, and, and, and if you stay with them good qualities, they're going to be some beautiful people. Now, don't, don't think they ain't going to have a little Jay-Z in them in their pocket. Because when I was young, they didn't, my pop didn't want me to have James Brown in my pocket. He wanted me to listen to Cap Calloway in them. I was like, that's all right, Pop, but I'm black and I'm proud. This was up, man. <laughs> you see that? And it, it goes down the line. You got to let them, you got to treat them like you was treated at times. You got to understand what they're going through. And that'll make you a good, tell me, it'll make you a good father. All right, y'all? All right. I'm going to get ready to go get the Holy Ghost next door here. <laughs> I'll see y'all next week, okay? All right, what we'll do? Appreciate it. Are y'all good? Yeah. He's definitely a blessing for y'all to come through. And bless